The movie opens up with Nick, an ex-cop and a convict entering a big hotel named The Roosevelt. He asks the receptionist about a room booked under the name John Walker. The receptionist confirms the reservation and orders a valet to escort Nick to his room. Surprisingly, the hotel staff doesn't know that the person is Nick and not John. Later, Nick relaxes in his room and has some food. Then, all of a sudden, he starts cleaning everything present in the room to remove his fingerprints. He then writes a note and leaves it on the table. After this, he steps out of the window and stands on the ledge of the building. The scene then shifts to one month earlier, where Nick is in prison. He's sentenced to 25 years for stealing a precious diamond known as the Monarch Diamond. His cop friend Mike comes to visit him and tells him about his father's death. Nick is very much disturbed by the news and blames his brother Joey for their father's untimely death. The next day, some officers take Nick out for a day to attend his father's funeral. Mike and his fiancée express their condolences to both Nick and Joey. Shortly after, Joey's girlfriend, Angie, leaves the brothers alone to let them talk in private. As soon as she leaves, Nick gets into an argument with his brother, and the two start fighting. Soon, the officers intervene and separate the brothers. Taking advantage of the situation, Nick steals a gun from one of the officers and points it at his brother to open his handcuffs. Terrified, Joey obliges and allows him to escape. Nick then punctures the tires of the police car so that they cannot follow him and drives away in another car. The officers immediately inform the police headquarters about Nick's escape and the HQ sends additional officers to pursue the runaway criminal. However, Nick drives towards a train track and manages to escape after crashing his car against an oncoming train. At last, he arrives at a hideout, where he finds all the necessary items left there by his partners. At present, Nick is on the ledge of the building. A woman on the road notices him, and soon, many people along with police officers gather around the place thinking that Nick is about to take his own life. Right then, there arrives a police officer named Dante, who has been given the responsibility to remove Nick from the ledge. Later, another police officer, Jack, comes to converse with Nick and addresses him by the name Walker. Jack then asks why he's willing to take his own life, but Nick simply replies that he wants to talk to Lydia, a female negotiator. He also threatens Jack by saying that if Lydia doesn't arrive in 30 minutes, he will jump from there. Moments later, the officers find a note on the table where Nick has mentioned that he's innocent. Meanwhile, Jack informs Dante about the situation, and the latter orders Lydia to arrive at that hotel. Without any delay, Lydia, who's also a police officer, goes straight to inquire about Nick. Surprisingly, the media also gets the information and crowds the street. Lydia then addresses Nick by the name Walker after asking the receptionist about him. She also finds out that there are no fingerprints on any objects in his room, not even on the pen with which the letter was written. With the aim of getting Nick's fingerprint, Lydia offers him a cigarette, but he refuses. He then mentions that he called her so that he can talk to someone whom he can trust. In the meantime, we get to know that Nick has a microphone attached to his collar, with the help of which he's talking to his brother Joey and his girlfriend Angie. Elsewhere, Mike is looking for Nick and trying his best to track him down, unaware of the situation going around. Meanwhile, Angie and Joey are seen entering a nearby building. By this time, TV channels have started to broadcast the news about Nick. They also mention an incident from a month ago when Lydia couldn't persuade a young man and stop him from taking his own life. And now she's been called by another man who's about to commit suicide. This upsets Lydia as she has no idea why Nick has called her. In the next scene, we're introduced to David, one of the richest people in town and the owner of Roosevelt Hotel. He's informed by his secretary about Nick's suicide attempt, but surprisingly, David doesn't pay attention to it, as he is selfish and has no interest in the well-being of others. Elsewhere, Joey and Angie get on the top of the building, which also happens to be owned by David. As soon as they reach the top, they plant a bomb to make their way into the building and inform Nick about it. However, Nick suggests they wait because a large sound will drag people's attention toward them. 
So, to avoid the noise, he pretends to jump from the balcony, instigating the crowd to become worried. With the crowd shouts in horror, Joey detonates the bomb and succeeds to make a hole in the roof without anyone knowing about it. After this, the couple get inside. On the other hand, in order to keep distracting Lydia, Nick requests a cigarette and Lydia provides him with one. He then starts to smoke and passes it to Lydia after some puffs. With the help of the cigarette, Lydia asks Jack to extract Nick's fingerprints and match them with their database. Elsewhere, Mike, who's watching the news on television, notices Nick on the ledge and recognizes him. In the next scene, Joey and Angie successfully enter the building and disable all the security systems, including the CCTV cameras. On moving forward, they notice a sensor and become worried as they have no idea about how to disable it. Joey then contacts Nick and asks him about what to do next. Unfortunately, at this time, Nick is being questioned by Lydia, but he somehow manages to give hints on how to disable the sensor. Nick does not understand the clue, but Angie does. She tells Joey that it's a heat sensor and they must use a fire extinguisher to disable it for a moment. Right then, Lydia gets a call from Dante, who informs her that the person standing on the ledge is Nick, not Walker. Hearing this, she asks him if he's the same Nick who had stolen the diamond from David, and Dante confirms it. Dante also tells her that the officer named Mike is Nick's friend. After this, Lydia calls Mike to ask him questions about Nick and his mental condition. Mike replies that he's known Nick for a long time and that he's been imprisoned for stealing the diamond. Surprisingly, while Mike is talking to Lydia, he can be seen burning the files, including his and Dante's information that he found while searching around Joey's residence. On the other hand, as David is dealing with a client, his assistant informs him that the person who's about to commit suicide in front of their building is Nick, the same person who stole his diamond before. Hearing this, David becomes angry. Afterward, Lydia approaches Nick and asks him the purpose of his whole stunt. Nick replies that he was appointed as a security guard by David two years ago. His main work was to guard the valuable diamonds, but they were stolen by David himself, who set out a plan to imprison him for the cause. At last, Nick reveals that he's doing so to prove his innocence among the people. While talking to Lydia, Nick notices some police officers heading towards the nearby building to check on the vault where David has stored his jewelry. Wasting no time, he informs Joey about the arrival of the officers so that he can finish his work quickly. However, Joey tells him that they need more time to find a place to conceal themselves. To buy them some time, Nick takes out a bundle of money from his pocket and throws it toward the crowd, causing them to gather around the officers and stop them from reaching the building. With this stunt, Joey and Angie get enough time to finish their work and hide inside an air vent. David, on the other hand, is furious about the circumstance and believes that Nick's decision to pull his trick on the same day as his significant news presentation is not a coincidence. Despite Dante's assurances that he shouldn't worry, David threatens the officer to resolve the issue quickly. In the following scene, Dante approaches Lydia and warns her that if Nick doesn't withdraw, he will send a tactical team to handle the situation. After this, Lydia confronts Nick and urges him to withdraw, and provides details on the case. In turn, Nick reveals that David was nearly bankrupt, and to get out of it, he intentionally stole the diamond and claimed the insurance payout of roughly $40 million. He also claims that David took the diamond with the help of some of his police colleagues, and blamed Nick for it. After explaining this, he adds that he contacted her since she's a trustworthy cop and that he will require additional support, as other police officers are also involved in this crime. After listening to all this, she finally agrees to help, but also threatens him by saying that if he's proven wrong, she will push him from the building. Following this, a suspicious Lydia informs Dante that Nick is unwilling to withdraw. As a result, he commands the tactical unit to take their position. On the other hand, Angie and Joey are on their way to David's locker room, crawling through the air vent. When Angie tries to open the locker, she notices a lock that's difficult to break. Luckily, Nick provides her with the steps to disable the lock and the sensors connected to it. After a bit of struggle, she successfully disarms the lock, and Joey enters the vault. 
In the next scene, Lydia is ordered by Dante to leave the room, but she refuses. All of a sudden, she walks out of the window and appears on the building's ledge. She then learns that Nick was speaking to Joey all this time and providing him with instructions to carry out their plan. Just then, Joey informs Nick that the monarch diamond that they're looking for is not in the vault. Taken aback, Nick orders Joey to carry out plan B. He then tells Lydia about his plan to prove himself innocent. Following his brother's orders, Joey turns on the security alarms of the building, causing David and a few security officers to move toward the locker. After reaching there, David finds out that someone has breached his security and quickly goes to check on his precious monarch diamond, which he has kept in a different vault. Luckily for him, he finds the diamond and takes it with him. Meanwhile, Lydia returns to the hotel room and calls the intelligence agency to investigate the case of the diamond. After some time, Mike shows up and begs Nick to come back to the room. However, the latter refuses. It turns out that Nick is angry at his friend because he thinks that Mike is the cop who conspired with David to steal the diamond. Suddenly, with the aid of a rope, Dante's assigned police squad arrives there. However, Nick somehow manages to escape and get away from the officers, making his way to the opposite room. The scene then shifts to David, who keeps the diamond in his pocket and returns to his cabin. To his surprise, Joey and Angie are waiting for him there, pointing a gun at him. Threatening to shoot, they take the diamond from him and cuff him in his own office. After this, Joey hands over the diamond bag to the valet who escorted Nick to his hotel room and leaves the place. In the meantime, Dante contacts David to let him know that the person who stole the monarch diamond from him is none other than Nick's brother. Here, it's revealed that Dante was the cop who helped David get away with the diamond robbery. On the other hand, as Nick is being pursued by the cops, he runs into the same valet who hands him a jacket containing the diamond. A while later, Dante discovers Joey and Angie at the hotel and inquires about the diamond. Right then, Lydia gets a call from the intelligence agency team who inform her that they have substantial information about Dante and Mike's involvement in the diamond robbery case. Next, Nick somehow manages to reach the top of the building but gets surrounded by Dante and his officers. Lydia also arrives there to stop Dante but he orders the officers to take her away. Shortly after, David brings Joey to the rooftop and threatens to kill him if Nick does not return the diamond. Left with no options, Nick obliges, but David still orders Dante to kill Joey before leaving. After this, the cunning Dante threatens Nick to leap from the building or else he will kill his brother. Meanwhile, Mike overhears the conversation and shoots Dante to save his friend. Unfortunately, Dante has been wearing a bulletproof jacket and he shoots Mike back. He then attempts to finish Mike once and for all, but Lydia arrives in the nick of time and shoots Dante in the neck, killing him instantly. After the encounter, Nick notices David fleeing with the diamond. Then, out of nowhere, he leaps from the roof and lands on the safety airbags placed by the police officers. He confronts David and gets into a physical altercation during which he manages to steal the diamond from David's pocket. He then demonstrates the monarch diamond to the media and proves his innocence. Because of this, David is taken into custody for stealing the diamond and lying to the insurance companies. In the last scene, Lydia bails Nick out of the prison and takes him to the nearest bar. Here, it's revealed that the elderly valet who was given the bag of diamonds was none other than his father. The old man was never dead, rather, it was a ruse to establish Nick's innocence and get his freedom. The film ends with Joey proposing to Angie for marriage with a diamond ring he stole from David's jewelry vault.